So Sammy, we're gonna actually improve the battery bank in the RV. Do you have anything to say about this? I thought that is exactly what you would say. My name is Line Screw One, and I'm an alcoholic. Yes, sir, I am powerless to consume at least 10 amps of electricity boondocking in my RV in the Canadian wilderness. Please help me. Ooh. Let's talk about the basics. First of all, your RV comes with a coach battery or batteries. You may have one, you may have two, you may have four, you may have six, and they vary in size. The most important and simplest thing you need to remember is that the size of the battery, for example, a 24, is smaller than, say, a 27 or a 31. So the higher you go with a number, the bigger the battery is and the more capacity it has. And the only thing you really need to pay attention to with coach batteries is not the cranking power, it's the amp hours. How many amp hours do you got in reserve to run all your goodies? Especially that darn furnace. The furnace is the biggest power hog and I am really bad at running my furnace all night, all the time, with my smart TV and draining the crap out of my batteries. In fact, I beat the crap out of my batteries. I thought, for example, that I had just uh, replaced them three years ago. I was wrong. It's been almost four years of complete hell on my batteries. I probably should have replaced them a year ago, but I was cheap and I stretched them out a wee bit. Now let's talk about what I've done to upgrade the RV with batteries. The RV originally came with group 24 size batteries, two of them. And that's what I replaced several years ago, nearly four years ago, as a matter of fact. But I did a couple things to increase the capacity. Not only did I originally replace those batteries with new 24s, but I added a third battery. Yes, I went crazy and got a battery box and added a, I think it was a group uh, 27 or 29, I can't remember off the top of my head. But I added about 105 amp hours by adding that third battery, which was super fantastic. So what I did this year was, no, group 24 is not good enough for the two main batteries in the coach. I went group 27 because they fit. Now, I did want to go with two sixes together to make a 12, but they're a little too high and I don't have the clearance in the battery base, so that was completely out of the question. So I decided to go with the group 27, and each of them have 90 amp hours each. So let's do the math. I went from a system with two 65 amp hour batteries plus a 105 to now having two 90s plus the 105. If you do the math, that's about a 20% increase in capacity. Yay! I'm that guy that runs the furnace all night, runs the smart TV all night, leaves a couple lights on all night, leaves the porch light on all night, because if I own this and live in it, I'm going to be comfortable and I'm not tripping over my dog in the middle of the night because I can't afford to keep the lights on. That's just the way I roll. I don't care about <laughs> saving energy. I got the solar, but in the winter, we don't have much solar energy, especially here in the Pacific Northwest. Actually, in the matter of fact, I've been in Arizona in the winter and there's not much solar in the winter either, even on a clear day. Now, too many other battery videos have said all sorts of crazy things, some extremely accurate, some extremely bull hooey. You can mix and match any battery size you want. 
As a matter of fact, you can even mix the 6 volts with the 12s, as long as the 6s are connected in series and then in parallel with the 12s that you also have. So it doesn't matter, electrons or electrons, as long as everything is wired correctly, it doesn't matter. So I'm kicking around going on a trip somewhere. Um, it all depends on the weather, and I definitely know I need as much power to run that darn furnace that can suck up to 10 amps an hour when it's running. Now, it's typically a 50-50 cycle, so half the time it's on, half the time it's off. But I like to be warm, and I think you do too. So this is a great time to upgrade your batteries, and my tip of the day is to photograph all the battery leads and all the lines going where they're going, because I've got a Go Power system and I've got um, you know power going all sorts of places and you need to keep track of that and do not mismatch those wires and the reason I tell you you should do this is because you don't want to cross your wires because I did that once for a brief second in a parking lot in Bellingham Washington when I replaced one of these batteries and it fried my onboard charger which is a crappy 2 amp charger so I just replaced it with a Walmart charger. That's why you see that little red um, charger in the battery bank. I just used that. It was a simple fix to solve the problem. Thank God I didn't do any other further damage. So even today when I installed these batteries, I photographed all the terminal connections to make sure I got every wire in the correct place so there was no mystery, no guessing, and no accidents. And I was very careful to keep the leads, the positive and the negative, separate. And the best part of my crazy little three battery system is that one battery that I have that's the third battery, I'm going to even upgrade that soon to a group 31 to get a little bit more out of the system. Hey, there's nothing wrong with more power. So in the meantime, folks, stay safe, keep your wheels on the ground, and stay warm and keep your electrons flowing over and over.